this is the story of Justine and the misfortunes of virtue. Justine. Have they been told yet? Call Justine and Juliet, please. Yes, Reverend Mother. should learn. It isn't doing wrong that's dangerous. It's being found out. Juliet, don't be I'm so coming. shocked. Don't keep it it's true. true. They lived in a secluded convent. Two sisters, completely different in appearance, temperament, and expectations. In truth, the good must often suffer from the thorns of life, whilst the wicked gather nothing but roses. My children, I have sad news for you. A week ago, your father was forced by his creditors to leave this country. And last night, your mother died of grief. Oh, but that's... Oh, no. You must be very brave. <laughs> well, you mean we're left with neither parents? Nor money? Not entirely without money. Some family friends have arranged for you to receive 100 crowns each. A substantial amount which will help you in this time of crisis. When do we get the money? You shall have it immediately. My poor child. Unfortunately, there is no provision for you to continue your education here in the convent. So you will have to leave today. Leave? But where will we go? Oh, don't worry. I've got a friend who will look after us. I trust you will not forget the lessons you have been taught here. No, I won't, Reverend Mother. The best lesson I've learned here is to look after yourself, but nobody else will. Come on. Oh, come on. Holy Mary, Mother of God, whatever will become of them. Amen. 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 Am
Take heed, citizens, hear ye today a new law that under pain of death it is allowed that beggars and all destitute, being penniless, may lodge or pass freely within the city walls. Any such offender will suffer public whipping, be taken to the gallows, and there be executed. Hear ye this new law. Can I help you, young ladies? Yes, we're looking for the house of Madame de Buisson. Yes, on the right. Are you sure? Well, it's one of the best-known houses in Paris, over there. What did he mean by that? Is this Madame de Buisson's place? That's right. Go right in, dear. Huh. Attention, girls. Two new lodgers. They're a bit shy, but they'll settle in. I'm Juliet, and this is my sister, Justine. She looks like a virgin. <laughs> Juliet, I don't think I'm going to stay here. Oh, please yourself. But you'll find the bed notes where not so soft. <laughs> in fact, I'm going now. But why, my dear? In this house, you can stay a virgin for months. At least as far as the gentlemen are concerned. Well, when I first came here, I was a virgin every night. Come back, oh, dear. let her go. That's right. She's not the kind of girl for here. <laughs> Just a sous all I ask. Bear a soup for poor blind beggar. Why don't you come with me, my pretty? I'll teach you a few tricks you don't know. Leave her alone. Can't you see? She's a decent girl. <laughs> Where are you going, my dear? Oh, Father, I must find somewhere safe to stay for the night. Have you any money? Only 100 crowns, Father. It's all I have in the world. Then you must take good care of it, my child. Where is it? Here, Father. I'll take care of it for you. Monsieur Duarpin comes to my church every morning. And if you come with him, I'll give it to you tomorrow. He lives quite near here, and you'll find he has a very pleasant house. A house, Father? A virtue. Come, my child. It's at the end of the street. Oh, thank you, Father. God go with you. Hmm. Company, girls. Run along now. Claudine, you teach her the tricks of the train. Go on, darling. Girls. It's all right, then. Come in. Come in, come in. It'll cost you one crown. Is that all right? Where's the money? Huh? I gave it to a priest for safety. He said he would give it back tomorrow morning in church. What priest? But he said you went every morning and you would take me with you. Why, you stupid girl? You're lying. I'm not. I swear I'm not. 
But you have no money. It seems I have no money, no friends, and no place to stay. Listen, I have no servants, so maybe... Maybe we can arrange for you to stay. I'll work. As in fact, I... Uh, how much do you eat? Not very much. Huh? Just some bread and a little soup. Soup? <laughs> I eat soup once a week. No, it'll be bread and river water. And that's all. Well, I don't mind, so long as I have a roof over my head. You can sleep in the other room. Come on. There. It's nice, isn't it? You like it. That dress is far too good for a servant. Hurry up! I'll take good care of it for you. <laughs> Hurry up! Come on, don't be shy. Let's see the rest. Excellent <laughs> cloth worth at least three crowns. Men can be very demanding. Do you know how to satisfy them? Remember, at six o'clock tomorrow morning, the house must be absolutely clean and the steps polished. Because uh, in this house, there are other people. Mm. Hey. Must it be true that prosperity attends the very worst of conduct? 
must it always be that disaster dogs the heels of virtue. Justine had yet to suffer. It seemed that in her innocence she could not even comprehend the evils that still lay before her. La, 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 la. and I rent the first floor. <laughs> and each day it must be cleaned, you understand? Yes, sir. And sometimes in the evening it must be cleaned again. Yes, sir. If so, well, I shall send for you. Yes, sir. Come here. Sir? Ah, uh, here. Tell... Uh, do you like this? <gasps> I think it's beautiful. I was talking with Monsieur Duarpin... Uh, ...about you. And we have agreed that in the future it would be more convenient... La, 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 la. Ah! <gasps> 
for you to sleep upstairs. Yes, sir, but you sleep here. Precisely. Oh. <gasps> This pretty little trinket may be yours, but not at once. Maybe in two or three months, I think. Not here or here. But here! Uh, uh, ah! Uh, you hit me, you little devil! Let, let go! Ah! Come back! What happened? Well, huh? He wanted he wanted me to sleep with him. Why not? Why well, oh, you silly girl? That is my plan. Now upstairs there's a box full of jewelry. My plan is that at night when he's asleep, you could uh, go, go, uh, go, go, go in and grab it. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes, no. you. No. You bitch. No. You. No. No. Stupid no. child. No. Come by a lady's lovely dress in perfect condition, sir. Just paid it. Lovely, isn't it? How much is it? Three and a half crowns, sir. Well, sir, what do you offer? Come by, come by, come by this dress here. In perfect condition, I assure you. Gents, a sensational bargain for your ladies. You won't find a better offer. It's a lovely bargain I'm offering you. Not for five, not for four, but for a measly three and a half crowns. A lovely lady's dress in perfect condition. A sensational bargain. The chance of a lifetime. Here, Your servant, lady. sir. Yours, I assure you. This is the house. And that's the girl. Now, come here, you. Ow! Monsieur Desroches, Monsieur Desroches, what brings you back so soon? Ah, uh, when I uh, reached my uh, house this morning, yes. I opened the strong box and I found the gold brooch was uh, missing. What? But certainly, you cannot blame me. Oh, no, 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 Monsieur, but her. Last night, when I had the last glass of wine you gave me, I slept sounder than usual, and I must have been fast asleep when she cleaned the room. And uh, she is the only one who could have stolen the brooch. Oh, oh, I didn't uh, steal uh, it. Uh, well, you, you see, Monsieur, <laughs> who has everything she possesses, is on. On, on, on her back, and in in that room, <laughs> room where she, 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 she sleeps. Then search her. Search her. It's not here. All very well concealed. Ah. I arrest you as a thief. The penalty is death. No! But I didn't steal it! Take her away! No! A 
sad end, I fear, for a vicious life. And I have to find a... another mate. Welcome, sweetie. The food's bad, but the company's good. How long do you plan to stay? I don't know. Do you mind telling me what brought you here? You look so innocent. But I am innocent. I was falsely accused of stealing a brooch. I know, dear. To hear us talk, we're all innocent. That is, all except her. Who is she? Her name's Dubois. Name a crime. Any crime. And she's guilty. Robbery with violence. Corruption of children. Murder. Murder? Half a dozen times proved. Without proof, maybe a dozen. She'll be hanging high tomorrow morning. That's the scaffold they're building outside now. There'll be quite a crowd tomorrow to see her go. Thousands. That's the way I want it, too. Come on. It's Dubois' last night. Let's have a party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, Dubois, you open the bar.
What do you want with me? I don't want you. I need you to help me. But how can I help you? They say that tomorrow you're going to... No. <laughs> tomorrow I'm not going to. I am going to leave this place tonight. And so are you. Four men are building the scaffold intended for my exit. They are friends of mine. We have planned my exit in a somewhat more attractive fashion. But what am I to do? Before it is dawn, they will throw lighted torches into the courtyard. And then you will scream, oh, very much, huh? And then it will cause confusion, and they throw the rope over the wall. And then, away. You and me, huh? Oh, why me? Because you look so innocent, you little thief. <laughs> yeah. 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 Come down now. That'll do. Take a rest. Do you know the story about the two little birds? One little bird said to the other, You're silly, and he went. <laughs>
Meanwhile, Juliet had learned her lesson well. She felt that having been born for crime, she must at least commit it grandly and set no limit to her capacity for evil. It's the same young man. Why does he spend every night with her? He used to prefer me. That was when he could afford to pay, my dear. The bitch. To think it's our money she's using. Remember what I told you, virtue must be avoided at sure disaster. And poverty also must be avoided at all costs. But how? If, like us, you're young and in a hurry? By crime, of course. The viler the better, for vice is most amply rewarded.
There are soldiers at the city gates watching for you. What other news from Paris? A prison was burned to the ground. Twenty convicts died. You and I were the only ones to escape. How horrible. Yeah. What is horrible? That they are dead? Or that you are alive? <laughs> Any other orders? <laughs> what do you want me to do? Would you like me to serve her to you? Like some kind of food? Hmm? Last night, they saved your life. Mm. Now they want you to be grateful. Mm. I go. So, my lovely one, here are four fine stalwart men, all anxious to share your favors. Now you may choose. What are we waiting for? <laughs> for this. Personally, I know 10,000 women in Paris who would give anything to be in the position you are in now. Such handsome men. Well, I give you a choice. You join us. You become one of us. You steal with us, you fight with us, you live with us. If need be, you die with us. So, she is one of us. I accept her. I approve her. There will be no more violence. You will keep your hands off her. Consider how valuable her innocence is to us. We will protect her. We will not ravish her. Better for our business. So now she's one of us. That's what your boy said. If she belongs to us, what are we waiting for? Why should you be first, eh? Ah. Here, why should you? It's right.
Don't be afraid. How are you? Don't touch me. Why are you so frightened? I'm not going to hurt you. Where am I? Who are you? My name is Raymond. I spend my days painting. This is my house. I live here alone. How long have I been here? Five days. Until last night, I felt worried about you. But you don't know who I am. What's your name? Justine. That's enough for me. <gasps> don't be afraid. You scared me. I think I better be going now. Oh, no. Please stay. But I have no money. I can't pay you with anything. Yes, you can. Let me paint you. Don't move. Don't move. Justine. Well, you said you wanted to paint me. Of course I want to paint you. But also to know you. To love you. I don't want to hurt you or frighten you. I know how you must have suffered. You won't tell me how. But I can see it in your eyes. I want to love you sincerely, tenderly. There's nothing to be afraid. 
afraid of anymore. Excuse me, sir. What do you want? Two condemned women escaped from the prison last week. Condemned? Yes, a thief and a murderess. Well, what can I do for you? They're not here. They could be hiding here without your knowledge. Keep back! Who's there? Who's in there? It's one of them. <coughs> Justine! Help! <coughs> Run for it! Help! Help! You can't get away from me. <laughs> oh, you hurt me. I told you I'd get you. You just wait. Who's there? And what are you doing here? You were spying on us. Let me go! <laughs> I'm Tell in the no me You were watching no. us. No, I wasn't. Jasmine, come over. Here's a spy. have been tried, found guilty, and condemned. And now listen to your sentence. I don't understand. I am the Chevalier de Bressac. This forest here belongs to my family. We could have killed you as a poacher. But I've decided to spare your life, for you might be useful to me. You're young. And you have a certain air of innocence. I believe from your dress that you were running away from something or somebody, probably both. Very well. If you can be trusted, I can offer you both refuge and employment.
Justine? Yes? Follow me. You know, my dear, you've only been with me three months. But I don't know what I'd do without you. Thank you, my lady. This past week in Paris, I've missed you dreadfully. I don't understand why you beg not to come. I, I'm sorry, my lady. Come, Justine. Now you must help me take my bath. My husband hasn't been unpleasant to you in my absence. He hasn't tried anything else. No, my lady. <laughs> oh, no, of course not. You must tell me all your secrets. Remember, we must share everything together. Everything. What do you want? <laughs> not you, my dear, of course not. Just a favor. Shh, be quiet. Your wife will hear it. She's right next door. I know. It is your closeness to her which makes you so useful. But, but why? If you don't already know, the family's fortune, all this, the house in Paris, the mines, in short, everything belongs to my wife. All I possess is 50,000 crowns a year until she dies. <laughs> Each morning, when my wife wakes, you make and bring to her bedside some chocolate. It will be the work of a moment to flavor her chocolate with a pinch of this powder. Remember, once I spared your life. I ask so little in return. Think about it. But, but she's your own wife. Takes courage, doesn't it? And if I refuse? Then I shall tell her that you are planning to murder her yourself. Good night. Pleasant dreams. Tell me, O oh mirror, who in the world is as beautiful as I am? <laughs> Good morning, Justine. Good morning, my lady. Pour me a cup of chocolate, please.
Justine, what's the matter? My lady. What is it? It's your husband, my lady. My husband? What has he done to you? He wants me to help him to murder you. What? <laughs> this is some joke. He's playing tricks with you. Your husband gave me this. He told me to put it in your chocolate. How oh, ridiculous. Give it to me. Let me show you. Zero. Zero. See? He wants some more. Oh, madame. I was waiting for you. Were you? Yes. Every afternoon I dream that one day it will be like it was when we first met. I bathe myself, lie down, and wait. Poor Emily. I know that for this reason you've looked for other kinds of pleasure, but now I am here. And I want you. Favorite wine and mine. Just like old times. Maybe everything will change tonight. Yes. My dear, it's years 
since you've been so passionate? Yes. It's because it's never been so exciting as now. Why? I find it stimulating to make love to someone who quite soon will be dead. What do you mean? Death is very close to you, my dear. Your cheeks are becoming pale. Your eyes. <laughs> you drank my wine, my favorite wine. <laughs> Certainly. The wine my wife drank was poisoned, and she died in agony with your name on her lips. You murdered her! <laughs> Who would believe you? Who will believe you with the brand of a murderess on your breast? No! 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 And remember, every constable in France will be looking for you. Hide yourself, if you can. <laughs> into the hands of the guilty and to be their prey. Nature does not leave in our hands the possibility of committing crimes which would conflict with her needs. Equilibrium must be preserved. It can only be preserved by crimes. Therefore, crimes serve nature. And in that same forest through which Justine fled, her sister Juliet was about to enjoy the further profits of her chosen vice. Sweet Juliet, in these past few days we have murdered and thieved our way to a considerable fortune. Don't you agree with me now that vice can be a marvelous source of enjoyment? Quite apart from the profit, of course. I do indeed. You've taught me well. 
I couldn't have asked for a better pupil. Why don't we bathe here? We're quite alone. Lovely idea. <laughs> Give me your hand. Ah, <laughs> oh, come over here where it's deeper. A considerable fortune, thanks to you. <laughs> but I'm not going to share it. Taken everything from the house. Everything? And Claudine? She's gone. Forever. Good morning, miss. Could you tell me? Is that a church over there on the edge of the wood? No, miss. It was a monastery, the Chateau du Bois. Does anybody live there? Four good men who, so they say, have given up all their worldly goods and thoughts so that they may pass their days in meditation and study. Do you think they would let me stay there a while? The four good men are never outside the chateau, but you can speak to their gatekeeper. Thank you. What do you want? Sir, sanctuary. Are you alone? I haven't a friend in the whole world. Oh, sir, I implore you, in the name of the four good men who live here, please let me stay. Have pity on me. 
come. Miserere Deus secundum magnum misericordiam tuam et secundum multitudum miserationum tuarum del iniquitatum meam. Amplio slava mea ab iniquitate mea et a peccato mea umunda me. Quoniam iniquitatem meam ego cognosco et peccatum meam contra me est semper. Tibi soli peccavi, come here. Et malum corum te fece ut justificeris in sermonibus tuis. Et vincas cum judicari, et cienim iniquitatibus, your name? Justine. Conceptus sum. Et in peccatis concipit me mater mea, et cienim veritatem, and what brought you here? Sir, I have been cruelly treated, robbed, falsely accused, imprisoned, assaulted, beaten, and pursued. I have I'll lost all I possess. All? Don't be shy. Answer my question. Are you still a girl of virtue? Then, uh, <laughs> welcome to Chateau des Bois. <laughs> my name is Clement. Emmanuel, attend to this young lady. Provide her with new clothes and let her be refreshed in body and mind. Tonight, you will join us for dinner and meet the brethren and your fellow guests together with our leader, the founder of our society. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for your kindness. May I know the name of the person who I am to thank? His name is Brother Antonin. Have a new guest? She is waiting to be summoned. So this is Justine. Come, my dear. Stand beside me. These will be your new companions. Olivia, Emilia, Cordelia, Florette. And the, 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 the fellow members of our order, Raphael, Manuel, Ezekiel and Clément. My friends! Oh, oh, 
Oh. We were in need of a new recruit. Yes. And Providence has sent us this fresh and most desirable yes. fruit. These, these companions, they came here like you, friendless and alone. They have but one task to serve the four of us in every way. Prepare yourself to join them. Seize her. Seize her! Seize her! Oh, but, sir, I was told that you four good men had devoted your lives to meditation and study! True, true. And the subject that we are studying is nothing less than the pursuit of pleasure. The supreme pleasure. Does our cruelty amaze you? Why? A pleasure shared is not necessarily a pleasure increased. Better we concentrate on our own pleasures solely. This flatters our pride the more. Oh, but the more we indulge our pride and our tastes, the more they clamor for
And so our search goes on. And on and on and on and on and on and on and on. Perhaps. Perhaps there's no end to it. Still we seek for what? For what? We do not know. We do not know. We do not know. For what we do not know. How long have I been sleeping? Two days. Time has no meaning. How long have you been here? They brought me to this place a year ago. Well, there must be some way of escaping from here. There must be. From time to time, girls leave and others arrive. How do they leave? Suddenly, without trace. We never hear of them again. Perhaps they're sent away. After what we have learned here, do you really believe the brethren would let them live? Oh, I want to die. You must not lose hope. What is the hour? It's getting late. Soon it will be night again. Gloria in excelsis Deo et in terra pax umini. for you, Justine, because I detect in you the seeds of a true believer. I believe. I am right, and you are wrong, if that is what you mean. Reflect, my dear, just where the path of righteousness has brought you the agonies that you have suffered, the pains that you have endured. If these are the fruits of righteousness, could it not be that for you they represent 
the ultimate pleasure? I don't understand. Don't you? Is it not possible that in your case, the ultimate pleasure is to endure? But if what you say is right, I am the sinner and you are the man of virtue? Understood. My friends, tonight we are about to celebrate the anniversary of our order. Brother Antonin. Brother Antonin. That is among us one who has achieved in a short space of time the fullest understanding of our philosophy. Justine. Precisely. Because of her understanding, I have decided that her stay amongst us should be short. Tonight, she leaves us forever. But surely, Brother Antonin, you... I have decided. It has fallen to you to demonstrate the ultimate sacrifice in our search for pleasure. Ah! <sighs> 
Justine! Justine! Where are you, Justine? in the road, sir. So it's market day. There's not a room to be had. But the lady isn't well. Can't you see? Well, it was my parlor at the back, sir. Show me. All right, sir. Excuse me, sir. Sorry about that, sir. I have friends in the town. Justine, I shall be back soon. Raymond?
Good afternoon. A friend of mine has arrived with a young lady. He has asked me to look after her. You were very quick, madam. She's in my parlor. Follow me. No. <laughs> Oh, my dear, how good it is to see you again. That will be all. You will leave her to me. I will take her to my house. Yes, ma'am. So here we are, huh? Let go of me. <clears throat> and you are not without your own kind of corruption, are you, you innocent little thief? Now you will come with me. Yes, you will oh. come with me. Oh, my God. Your God. What God? Evil exists in the earth. Since there's evil, it must be that God needs it. Or he is too weak to prevent it. I am not impressed with your God. Huh? You come with me. Oh. Well, that's our little friend again. Hello, my dear. a child any longer. You take off your clothes like the other girls. You get up there. Well, how's the lady? Lady, sir. But she left. Left? What do you mean? Your friends, sir. They took her with them. My friends? These are my friends. Well, there's been some mistake, sir. I swear to you, sir, a mistake. past, two children were stolen by monkeys and carried away into the jungle, and from them grew a white-skinned tribe that lived on the top of a palm tree. That was so very high that the sun never shone. Yes, sir. That's why they're white. Turn round and show you the other side. And you will see that she is white all over the place. Come along, 
Paramita dia. Show your beautiful charms. A murderess? Who did she murder? Commoner? No, Your Excellency. The Marquise de Bressac. What's the to do? They've arrested a criminal, a murderess. Oh. that woman, alone. That's dangerous, my dear. You're a minister of the king's government. There's no danger. I order you to stop in the king's name. I'm the Comte de Corville. Release the girl. I want to speak to her. What is the reason for this? That girl is my sister. Juliet. Juliet. My poor child, all of what you have told me has happened to you. Whilst I, indulging in every kind of wickedness, have enjoyed nothing but pleasure. Until here I am today, mistress of a wealthy nobleman, a minister of the king, with my own house in Paris, estates in the country, and two million crowns in the bank. I have learnt from my own experiences in this world that it's only the wicked who prosper. And I think that if I'm allowed to live, I intend to change my ways. No, no, sister. If that's the conclusion you have reached, you're wrong. My wicked life has proven empty. You have suffered a great deal, but in the end, you will be rewarded. You will accompany us to our house in the country, where peace and happiness await you. Happiness? You poor child.
For indeed, true happiness can only be found in the practice of virtue. And if God permits the righteous to be persecuted on earth, it is only to prepare them for a great reward.